And welcome back and thanks for staying with Morning Live. Now, certain sections of the M2 motorway in Johannesburg will be closed from the end of this month until October to allow for bridge rehabilitation. Now, it's bound to affect thousands of motorists making their way from east to west and north to south of the city. And uh, City of Johannesburg Mayor Herman Mashaba and uh, Thomas Chongo, who is the head of uh, department planning from the Johannesburg Roads Agency, uh, join me now uh, to talk about this. Thanks so much for coming through. Thank you so much uh, for inviting us uh, to share this uh, bad news uh, to, uh, to our residents. It's not a difficult decision to make, but unfortunately it's a decision we had to make. So, so let's talk about this. What has caused you to make this decision to close a large section of a very busy motorway in the city? What happened uh, upon taking of office, I uh, did a study to really look at the infrastructure backlog over the, uh, for the entire city and discovered when I got the report that we had we were sitting with 170 billion rands infrastructure backlog. Just obviously coming back uh, to the bridges. Uh, bridges, city of Johannesburg uh, sits with over just 902 bridges. And of these 900 bridges, only 6% of them are in good condition. 78% of them are in bad conditions. So I've always said over the last uh, few years of my administration that, uh, you know, our residents actually drive over or under our bridges at their own risk. But it's something that I think was to really get the residents to understand the seriousness of this particular matter. And uh, it started last year, I'm sure you remember, um, I think I ran about uh, August. When Thomas uh, and, and uh, the GRA once actually approached me to say, Mayor, we've got a challenge quickly. Can we take you on the, on the, on the um, eastbound uh, M2? And very same day from the freeway, I had to call the city manager um, because it's an administrative head of, the, of our government. I said, we've got a crisis. Fortunate enough, uh, they had already briefed him. And we had to make a decision to, st uh, to bring in a contractor and close part of it. And then last Wednesday night, I get a call. JRA wanted to see me. I thought they were going to tell me we're opening a road somewhere. Unfortunately, the news was that uh, may had, uh, the bridge, those bridges have actually deteriorated and uh, we unfortunately advise you to close uh, the bridges and um, the latest we are prepared to wait is until the 28th of February. And uh, that's how yesterday I took the media and took our residents into confidence. We are aware it is going to be an inconvenience, but I think we don't have a choice. It, it's an absolutely harrowing <coughs> picture that you are sketching for us. Uh, we had about uh, 37 bridges collapse in uh, this province already. Um, then you are telling us that we are literally risking our lives driving on the roads in the yeah, city well, under these bridges. And, 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 and also that only 6% of the city's bridges are actually in good condition. The obvious question is why? How well, did we get to this Well, stage? I think uh, it's a question that we need to really ask our, uh, the previous administration. These bridges uh, uh, Kenya were built uh, in the late 60s, uh, the late, uh, I mean, early 70s. So, they, so these bridges are over 50, uh, 50 years old. And since 1994, you can check on, on the finances of the city of Johannesburg to look, look at the repairs and maintenance. You're lucky if, uh, if they ever spend uh, uh, 2%. And obviously, I think uh, the, the treasury requirements is that in terms of repairs and maintenance, uh, you've got to spend between 8 and 10%. So if you don't re maintain uh, this facility here, you can imagine what will happen to it. And exactly uh, this road, so you can imagine built 50 years ago, how many cars were, were there at the time? And you look at the volume of traffic that uh, these bridges need to carry. But over and above that, we're sitting with a massive challenge of vandalism. Actually, people actually stripping every uh, 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 equipment, steel, uh, structures, uh, our cable network. So we're sitting with a huge problem. And as uh, with the JMPD, we arrest these people, give them to crimi the national criminal justice system. The following day, they're out there, continue with, with their criminal activity without realizing the danger that they're they are actually putting our residents at. Mr. Jongo, let me bring you in here as head of planning at JRA. You're an engineer. Now, how do we get ourselves into this situation? Did JRA not raise the alarm previously? Um, as according to the JRA mandate, uh, it's our well, focus is on roads and, and bridge uh, maintenance as well as bring, uh, building new structure. So what we have within JRA 
It's a program, a uh, bridge uh, management system, in that we capture all the bridges as asset. Uh, we determine the lifespan, and at a certain stage, uh, be it to no more T and where, a uh, certain action has to be taken to restore the asset to a good working condition, or uh, the design life, uh, as the executive mayor has said, uh, if you have a structure that's more than 50 years, it's most likely that it has outgrown its, its design life. So there has to be uh, a, a budget associated with replacement of that asset. So we then become overwhelmed with the backlog. Uh, but with the initiative that we have under that program um, will be to attend to these bridges uh, because we do monitor and assess all of them and then we attend to them, we prioritize and every year we target uh, the bridges that we can depending on the budget available. So you are the head of planning. And if you say you become overwhelmed with just the sheer level of maintenance and repair that needs to be done, uh, why is that? And, and, and also, in terms of that budget allocation, did you not raise this with the powers that be, with the previous administration, to say this needs to be done because if we don't, these are the consequences? The challenge could be the infrastructure funding required um, if you look at uh, the backlog in terms of numbers, we are talking over six billion on the on the bridges alone. And if you have those structures built around a similar timeline, uh, you are faced with the challenge of having to uh, invest heavily in a similar uh, within a similar timeline as well. If you build, say, eighty percent of your structures within the same timeline, fifty years later. You, you might have to look at how a similar amount to just uh, start replacing the, uh, the, the assets, especially the bridges. So because of that, uh, the issue, it's, it's, it's uh, how do we then uh, look at infrastructure investment and what will be the sources of, uh, of funding for that infrastructure? You see, when you talk infrastructure investment, we think e-tolls because we're still stuck with e-tolls and uh, the uh, re resultant uh, fallout that came as a result of the e-toll system. So what is the plan? Because there was a 2017 survey that actually indicated that 3,900 kilometers oh, of Joburg's road network mm -hmm. is actually in a poor to in very a, poor absolutely. condition. Absolutely. I mean, that's a road uh, that would take you from Johannesburg to Nairobi. I mean, six and a half billion rands of infrastructure backlog. <laughs> Just to really give you, you know, it's something that really personally really upset me. The city right now is working, uh, uh, it's investigating fraud and corruption cases worth 24 billion rands. In 2016, during the election, uh, the, uh, the former mayor spent uh, just over 300 million rands on self-promotion, was on billboards and everything. You know, you can imagine what you can do with, uh, with 300 million rands. And uh, 24 billion rands worth of uh, fraud and, uh, uh, and corruption cases. So I think it, it looks like the focus was somewhere else instead of obviously taking care of our infrastructure. The city of Johannesburg, as you are aware, tending to Islam, we're working on our inner city plan to take it back from the criminal elements. These things did not really happen by accident. They happened because of total neglect of uh, people realizing what public service is all about. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll actually uh, put in a request for the former mayor of Johannesburg to come in to respond to this because uh, there needs to be answers as to how this actually came to be. But I'm glad Mr. Chongo is here because I want to ask you about the state of our roads. Every time it rains, it seems our roads wash away. And we're talking about tarred roads. What is that about? H how does that even happen? It's, it's a similar challenge uh, in terms of uh, uh, design life, tend where, as well as the growth in traffic. Uh, our roads were built to take a certain amount of traffic, but over the years, traffic in our province has grown uh, tremendously. So we then have to go and either improve the pavement structure itself to take uh, additional traffic and also do reconstruction on some of the roads. So it, it's a question that also goes back to uh, infrastructure investment. So when it rains, um, because of the traffic within that pavement, uh, there will be weak spots. So when the rain comes, it exposes those weak spots, and that's how your potholes are then, are then formed. But I can accept that if we're talking about, you know, motorways that carry vast amounts of traffic. 
in my street where, you know, it's limited traffic all year round, why does the road wash away? Yeah, well, I think it's because of, <coughs> of, of our <coughs> drainage system. I mean, if you look at Soweto, which was great. I mean, uh, Soweto, as you remember, prior, uh, uh, prior to 1994, few roads were tarred. And uh, 1994 came, we went on a massive uh, uh, tarring of roads in the city of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the township of Soweto. But one thing that they forgot to do is to put the drainage system. So you can imagine you have all these beautiful tar roads with no drainage system. What happens when you have massive roads? I mean, uh, uh, some of uh, the, 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 the communities where uh, you have this beautiful uh, tar road uh, flowing towards a, a particular road, a house uh, on, on a corner, it's a total disaster. I, I don't know whether it, uh, we were not using engineers or we were just doing things quickly without realizing the long-term uh, impact of uh, what we were doing. But in some ways we are perpetuating um, uh, all of these uh, messes that continue because every time someone comes to come and patch it up, I don't know if you've seen around the city, Mr. Mayor, mm. how the roads are patched up. How much does that cost the city? Yeah, uh, well, the uh, thing is uh, you've got to have the money. Just on, on the road uh, resurfacing program in the city of Johannesburg and, and uh, gravel roads, we need 12 billion rands. And the city of Johannesburg right now, uh, I just, we just passed uh, the current budget that we're running off. I uh, just uh, uh, released uh, the adjustment budget. We've got just over 8 billion rands of capex. So just the roads alone, and we need uh, eight b uh, uh, 12 billion rands. On the, the, the bridges, 6.5 billion. So overall, our infrastructure backlog in the city of Johannesburg, we need, as a new administration, 170 billion rands to get the city to where we'd really like so it to what is So what we do is we are now focusing on service delivery, making sure that we reduce uh, the, the corruption. That's why on a daily basis we arrest anyone who's still less of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our of our resources to make sure that this money must go towards us, uh, the service delivery and deal with these issues. But there's no way that that can go stand here and promise the residents that I'll sort this matters out in, in two or three years' time when I, I know I need 170 billion rands. But one thing for sure is that I call upon the residents, hold us accountable on the budget uh, that uh, we've put aside to make sure that we get value for it. What's the future of ETOLS? Well, uh, ETOLS, uh, it's, a, it's a national and provincial uh, competency. I'm sure you know us as a DA, we've really been uh, against uh, ETOLS because our communities were con not consulted in the past. But unfortunately, national and provincial government over the years decided to, uh, to just give us a cold shoulder. Why uh, they, they brought uh, this expensive system, system that they are unable to, 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 uh, to, to monitor. But fortunate enough, residents of uh, Houghton decided not to pay. Uh, very only few people are paying. So I'm sure the system will, 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 will collapse because uh, people are not really cooperating with it. Uh, just a final quick one to Mr. Chongo. What is the most immediate work that needs to be done uh, besides the closure on the M2 going forward? On the M2, the immediate work is to, is to repair the uh, bridge structures uh, that have uh, fallen apart uh, in terms of cracks. Um, and uh, and restore the drainage system around the bridges because uh, one of the challenges we had was water uh, ingressing into the concrete structures and that is weakening the bridge pillars and the and the columns as well as uh, some steel L, uh, parts uh, cover plates uh, on our bridge joints which have been uh, vandalized and some of them have uh, uh, due to no more tend wear so we need to repair that so. In the short term, we are focused uh, on attending to urgent priorities in terms of uh, all the bridges as well as, uh, as the roads. Um, in terms of the roads, uh, we do have a portal patching program, which is a short interim measure. Uh, but our long term is uh, road reconstruction and uh, road resurfacing. And uh, we will have this conversation again. Thank you so much to uh, the city of Johannesburg Executive Mayor Herman Mashaba and also uh, Mr. Um, Thomas Chongo, who is the head of planning at the Joburg Roads Agency. And talking about sections of the M2 motorway in Joburg being closed from the end of this month until October and other matters relating to road infrastructure as well. Well, it's time now for news.